With just about 36 hours to go in his term, President Donald Trump says he is lifting the nation's COVID-19 travel restrictions for much of Europe and Brazil. But the incoming Biden administration is already bucking back before even taking office. Thanks for staying up with us here on Nightside. I'm Josh Sidorowicz. Ryan and Catalina are off. That ban was first put into place back in March for China, Iran, Brazil, and nearly 30 European countries to try to limit cases. Well, tonight, in this proclamation, the president says that he is lifting those restrictions for the UK, Ireland, and 26 other countries across Europe, as well as Brazil. The move takes effect on the same day that the CDC is requiring international passengers to start showing a negative test before boarding, January 26th. But at that point, Joe Biden will be in office. And the incoming administration is making it clear they do not agree with this decision. Tonight, Joe Biden's soon-to-be White House press secretary said, with the pandemic worsening and more contagious variants emerging around the world, they do not plan to lift this restriction and will instead strengthen public health measures. And we are already seeing one of those variants starting to spread here in the U.S., specifically here in Florida, that U.K. variant. It was reported first in the U.S. in Colorado December 29th, but our state has quickly rose into the top as the state with the most cases with that variant, 46. And 10 Tampa Bay's Angelina Salcedo found that local doctors want our leaders to put in more restrictions now. I think it's risky. There's no question about that. Dr. Jay Wolfson with USF Public Health says COVID-19 mutations from abroad will have more of a chance to come into the U.S. if we're not careful. It's like bringing people from California where the virus is raging and saying, well, make sure you get tested before you come to Tampa and hopefully that it'll catch it if you've got it. It's, it's, it's really no different. In a report published by the CDC, top scientists say a new highly contagious variant from the UK will become the dominant mutation of the virus in the US by March. We are going to be in trouble, yeah. Dr. Tom Unash, who runs a USF lab testing for COVID-19 mutations, expects Florida's COVID-19 cases will peak at a higher rate, despite vaccines being available. Right now, 60 to 70 percent of the population needs to be vaccinated to achieve herd immunity. Once the UK variant is dominant, 75 to 80 percent will need the shot. Well, this new variant by driving that curve and the increase much more sleepily is going to put a lot of pressure on our healthcare system. We'd have 740,000 cases after three weeks. Those 740,000 cases would um, translate to about 32,000 hospitalizations. That's why doctors are calling on our leaders to do something now, saying we need to consider mitigation efforts like these that were in place last summer. We could be facing a real real problem in three or four weeks if we don't really act now. And you know, doctors have said from the start that they are not surprised by these new variants because that's what viruses do. They mutate. But the UK variant is not the only one out there. Taking a deeper dive here, the CDC says that a South African variant has also emerged and it does share some mutations with the version from the UK. Another variant was also identified in four travelers from Brazil. And the CDC says that this one has mutations that might impact how it is recognized by antibodies. But so far, just the UK variant has been detected here in the US, and there is no evidence that any of these variants are more deadly. 